master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now say am i love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me thank god love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me hey man number two ready all my heart to him i give ever to him i'll cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true merits my soul best song faithful loving service to to him belong sing love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me thank god lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me Amen. On a third, souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saved. He will lift you out, out of the angry way. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved. Love lifted me. Love lifted me, sing it, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Thank you. You may be seated. Good evening. Uh, sure is good to see everybody out tonight. Um, we're going to take a little time here and go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to uh, talk about some things coming up and uh, getting a word of God here for just a little bit tonight. Uh, we'll be, uh, the, the older kids, teenagers, will be staying in here tonight because of the nature of the, the study we're having. We thought we should have kept it in here last week, probably, but uh, we're going to go ahead and and um, and pray this evening. Uh, Brother Wayne just texted me a while ago and said he, his back was really bothering him. He'd been moving his stuff in and out, and I think it hurt his back a little bit. And uh, uh, several people have asked about Corey. Uh, she did come through her surgery pretty good Monday, uh, but it is not fixed. Uh, her eye is not fixed. Continue to pray for her. The doctor said, hopefully this could will fix it. You know, it may take a few weeks, may take months for it to get completely better. And she's... Uh, she said, um, she felt like Mike Tyson hit her in the face. It's all swelled up and blue. And somebody said, at least he didn't bite your ear off. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, she said it was really hurting her, really hurting her. So uh, pray for her tonight and others um, that, have, that have been sick this evening. Brother Joey, you know, still having some... I hadn't heard from this week. But pray for them. A lot of the people need prayer. Lord in mercy, everywhere you look, uh, there's people with this problem, that problem. Um, Josh, y'all know Josh Dobson. We was just talking about him and go. Um, that he plays ball with us. Josh comes to church once in a while and visits with us. He um, got hit in the hit in the eye in the ball game the other night, and it's pretty bad. And he's running for this big position yesterday and won it. Actually, he's he's the House of Representatives. But he won some kind of something or another, labor, Board of Labor. What What is that? I don't even know what that is. What do they do? Nothing like the rest of them. <laughs> government employees. Uh, no, but uh, anyway, uh, he won his election. I, I felt real bad for him. Went and voted for him yesterday. And I texted him today and asked him how he was. And he said he, his eyes really bothered him. He may have to have surgery on it. So let's remember him in prayer tonight. And then a lot of others have been battling uh, this uh, flu and stuff like that. Let's remember our country, um, our church, youth rally, all the things. If you if you run out of something to pray, you pray for me, pray for the youth rally, pray for other people, and those like that, okay? All right. Oh, really? Oh, bless his heart. Okay, let's pray for him. All right. Hey, you got something special on your heart.
It's what? Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I heard that a person had been to Washington State. That's something. What's the odds of that happening? <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh, let's pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our health, our strength, all the many, 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 many blessings of life, God, that you've given us. We come before you this evening asking you that you'll forgive us of all of our sin, everything we've said, everything we've done, wrong or sinful, Lord. We pray that you'll forgive us right now and wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless this service tonight. God, get glory and honor to yourself and praise here this evening from everything that's said or done. I pray for those that are sick. Lord, all these that's been mentioned tonight, Lord, that need a touch from you, I pray that you would touch them for uh, the one that uh, Brother Joey, the, the little boy, and and Josh, and Corey, and, and uh, Brother Wayne, and Miss Dot, and others, Lord, tonight that had the flu and stuff. I pray that you'd meet the needs of every life. Bless the kids in their classes tonight, Lord. Bless everything that's said or done, all these special needs. You saw the hands that were lifted. I pray, God, that your will be done here tonight. God, whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. All right, let's do a little bit different tonight. Let's stand fellowship a little bit first, and we'll sit back down and make the announcements. So everybody stand. Turn around and be friendly. Everybody around you.
right, let's remain standing for our offering tonight. Everybody just remain standing, please. Amen. Uh, didn't mention y'all pray for Carrie and all of them. They're en route to Florida as we speak. Uh, there's a the big thing down at Daytona they got to go to the, for all next week. And uh, so y'all pray for them and uh, others that may be traveling. I, I don't know of, but I'm sure they are. Um, let's all give tonight. Honor the Lord. The Lord will bless you for it. If you want to give something special, you'd be praying about the special uh, youth rally offering. And it is, uh, it is uh, the time of year when our insurance is due. Just got the other day, $8,000 of our insurance. That's all the buses, all the buildings, everything combined. And so uh, Friday at 8. So big lick here. We get hit every spring. That on, with a youth rally on top of that runs up 12, 13. So uh, let's pray. Uh, everybody give and honor the Lord, and he'll bless you for it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our health and our strength and all the many blessings of life that you've given us. We come before you this evening asking forgiveness of everything we've done wrong. Lord, bless this offering. I pray that you would multiply it like you did them loaves and fishes. Take this and stretch it. Keep the buses running. Uh, keep them, fill them full of people, Lord, and uh, bless the drivers and, Lord, the workers. And, God, as we meet Saturday, go out. I pray that you would bless them in a mighty way. Do what ought to be done. Bless this offering tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the little kids go. The big kids are staying in here. Word of God here, of what we was doing last week. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, you should have come through there here the other day. Um, don't forget now, you uh, we heard the message uh, Saturday or Sunday night on House to House. We'll be going House to House this Saturday, Lord willing. We'll meet here at 930. Uh, if you live far away, want to go in your neighborhood, that's fine. Uh, just go out a couple of hours and visit. Lord will bless you for it. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And also, we're going to sing Friday evening. Uh, the bus leave here at 545. 15 minutes till 6. Uh, Friday evening, we're going down to the Straightway Baptist Church in Troutman, Brother Rick Davis's church. Anybody wants to go, we're going to take the little, the new bus and, uh, if you want to just meet us down there, if you live down that way, it's down there on all, I got the address on my phone. It's at 7 o'clock uh, Friday evening. Of course, if you dread going to church anyway, then um, <clears throat> I hope on what you're going to do in heaven. But uh, <laughs> that's right. Terry, it's your birthday, so you're going to sing us. How many would like to hear Terry sing a song uh, uh, and play the guitar and piano at the same time? Wouldn't that be a blessing? <laughs> 27, 27, 28. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> 27, 28. 28, that's what I thought. Yeah, somebody told somebody I was celebrating my my uh, uh, third anniversary of my 20th <laughs> or something like that. I made that a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, look at Deuteronomy 18, 9. Deuteronomy 18.9. That's your fifth book in your Bible there. And uh, these are things that the Lord said, stay away from. And he told his people in the Old Testament, you don't have these things around you. Get away from them, out of your life, out of your, your, your homes. Anything that has to do with this stuff I'm going to talk about. Look at verse number 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire. That was the God Moloch there. They, they 
would sacrifice their children actually to that God. Or, look at this stuff now, that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. All right, we're going to look at these things tonight. Last week we talked about people, just keep your Bible open there. We'll take them things one at a time. Go at the right quick. Won't be but just a few minutes this evening. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say a minute ago, don't forget to set your clocks up Saturday night. Saturday, go ahead and do it at 9 or 10 o'clock Saturday night, and you'll have it done. Set your alarm so you won't be late for church. Every year, every year, we have people come in at 11 o'clock, thinking it's Sunday school, and some get here at 12 o'clock when we're about ready to dismiss. So uh, uh, set your clocks up. Spring up, fall back. Spring up, fall back. Uh, this Saturday evening, and um, thank this last Wednesday night, we'll come to church in the dark. Uh, for a long time. Ain't that a blessing? It'll be daylight when we get out this Sunday. And I'm telling you, boy, that makes me start getting excited about the youth rally. When it starts thin daylight like that, I'm getting excited. All right. It said, don't make your son or your daughter pass through the fire. For, for you that were not here, just one statement. They had a god, Moloch, a great big god, and it was had its hands out like this, had a cow's beast a head with horns like the devil and had his hands out like that and they would literally take their babies and burn them and sacrifice them to that God and you say oh how awful how awful how awful uh, uh, and and people are still doing that today uh, just giving the world the devil their kids like it was nothing uh, and then it's child sacrifice now look at that second divination divination and divination by definition definition of divination is seeking knowledge of the future by supernatural means that means uh to foresee to tell the future uh looking into a crystal ball uh, uh i don't know i guess i, I should look that up about how a crystal ball got started you know, they'll take one of them old witches and stuff, take one of them crystal balls and look at it and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, you should buy that house or you should marry that person uh, and tell the future. That's what you do not want to do. You do not want to do to anybody reading your palm, fooling around, trying to tell your future without the Holy Spirit and God. Don't, don't fool with it. It's not of God. Here's a good thing to remember. There's one Holy Spirit and all the other spirits of the devil. There's a bunch of evil spirits, but there's only one Holy Spirit. So uh, when, when somebody says, well, I went down to this palm reader, and she looked at my palm, and she told me that something was going to happen. Uh, matter of fact, somebody told me the other night, said uh, some palm reader, tarot cards, I don't, even know, I don't even know if I've ever even touched a tarot card, but maybe you have. I, they got these weird pictures on them and all kind of these zodiac stuff or something like that and the, and the, the false gods and stuff and they supposedly tell stuff higher knowledge and stuff and they said that that them the the witch or the whatever she was told them that they was going to marry a certain person and sure enough they did um and it didn't work out but they did now and they asked me, they said, Brother Danny, what is that? And I said, that is, it's like this. It's like this. Uh, sometimes we see some of these kids running around here, and I, I mean, no older than we are. No older than we are. I can say, that kid right there is headed for trouble. That don't mean I know the future. That just means you see it so many times, so many times, so many times, you can sort of predict what's going to happen. You think how smart the devil is. Think how he's been dealing with every situation for 6,000 years. He can just about tell what somebody's going to do. That does not mean the devil knows the future. He might be able to tell some of it. You know what you said last week, Brother Derek? But I don't find anywhere in the Bible where he has any kind of 
we, all, we know, of course, you don't have all knowledge like God does. Uh, but he's smart. Don't doubt that a bit. He's like 10 million times smarter than we are. Yeah, yeah. Bonfire and all that. Well, back back wonder how it got started as a ball like that. I just, they look in the fire or something. But anyway, uh, the the devil. Uh, you all right? Look, hadn't you seen a girl running around and saying that girl right there is going to get in trouble? And most of the time, you're right. That's 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 what happened with this. That's what happens with this stuff. When when uh, John F. Kennedy went down there and got shot in Dallas. Gene Dixon, the famous psychic of that era, t had warned him and told him not to go. Well, everybody went crazy. Oh, my goodness. She, found, she prophesied. She prophesied. Well, you know, every time the president goes anybody where somebody's telling him not to go, uh, you're going to get one right once in a while. Uh, but that don't mean that they, that don't mean that's God. That is not God. When, when a snake crawls in the bed and, and looks in your eyes and tells you stuff, that is not the way God reveals the future to his children. I promise you. That is not the way the Lord does. If God tells you something, it'll be through his word. Oh yeah, them crystals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen them things. I think I've seen them things, like a little orb or something. People put them out. How many of y'all seen that? And out in people's fancy gardens and stuff. Uh, it's, that's supposed to, you're supposed to get higher knowledge. So, super. Yeah. Yeah, that's demonic. That ain't the Lord. Uh, you don't get knowledge from looking into a ball. That's, that's, that's witchcraft. We're going to get into charms and stuff in just a few minutes lucky charms you know like a rabbit's foot you know one guy said i said nothing can't happen to me i got this rabbit's foot right here and guy said didn't do the rabbit no good <laughs> he didn't have too good a luck did he so but uh, but you got to watch this stuff of of uh of weird people and i told you last week you can do what you want to I'm, I know I'm, I'm a little strange on stuff like this. I don't even read fortune cookies. When I go to a Chinese restaurant, I don't read them. All my girls, they all say, Dad, what's your say? Dad's what? I said, I don't know, don't care, don't want to know. I want to put some junk in my head. Uh, uh, you know, you're going to get rich next week. That ain't true. Uh, that ain't true. Yeah. Uh, if, why don't it say uh, you're going to break your neck? You know, people break their neck, but it never says nothing like that. Anybody? Could, could, but I think God could maybe stop it though. It's like the Ouija board. You know, I told you, I asked a Ouija board when I was about 16, how I was going to die. And my sisters had one and everybody was talking about it at school. And, and, and I said, oh, it's a bunch of, that's crazy. They said, all you got to do is put your fingers on it and ask it a question. And it'll move, you know, it'll, it'll do this. Well, we did it and it was moving, but I don't know. I thought she was doing it. She thought I was doing it. I don't know who's doing it. Uh, I still think she was. But anyway, I said, uh, how am I going to die? And it said, M-O-T, not motorcycle. How old will I be? 27. So, whoa. I said, I, remind me not to get on a motorcycle when I'm 27. <laughs> I'm not going to let that stupid thing tell me when I, well, obviously that didn't happen. I got saved and God, if I hadn't got saved, that might've happened. But who knows? But I don't think he knew that. Uh, I don't think the devil, that I don't even think that the devil don't even, he tries to, he knows the Bible's true, but he still figures he can win somehow or another. He's going to go cricket. Anybody else? Thank you. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Listen, if, if that was God and God told you you was going to get killed in a car wreck on the 25th, one would have come through your living room. If, if, if God says it, you can count on it, it's going to come to pass. I'd have been walking by one of some, some motorcycle and it blowed up and killed me or something. Uh, but the devil, he, he don't have that kind of, but how many of y'all ever messed with the Ouija board? Or, and I, I, we only did that one or two times. I thought it was stupid. I really did. I never even, it never even crossed my mind that it was a devil. That never even crossed my mind. I just thought it was some kind of junk. See, back then we didn't know that magic, magic's not of God. Magic ain't of God, y'all. It's the devil. Now, now, um, it, you say, well, I'm a magician. I, I didn't say tricks. You can do tr tricks, you know, and fool people. Like I can take my finger off, you know. Uh, that That's not of the devil. But if a person really does real magic, that ain't of God. Like that David Copperfield, he's one of the richest. He's like one of the richest people in the entertainment business. Y'all know he's he's like worth, Lord have mercy. He's like, remind me of that. I, I wonder why all the crazy people got the money. Mike Bloomberg spent over six hundred million dollars, six hundred million for nothing. And by the time it's all said and done, maybe at close to a billion, he has absolutely zero chance of being president. And he's, I thought, my goodness, you could have took hundred million here, hundred. Think how that could have helped the people in the world to spread. All billionaires would give one billion. They'd never, he'd never miss it. He's got fifty uh, or whatever. It'd be like if you had fifty dollars, you give one dollar, you still got forty nine. So anyway, David Copperfield has made literally billion of money, and some people say he really does it. I've never watched him, but can honestly do stuff. I don't know what does he do? Jump off a building or something? Then he is he the one that was on top of a building and suddenly appeared on the other building or something like, something like that. <laughs> Done something like that. Uh, that guy, you know, they used to have a guy come on about 10 years ago on TV and he would, uh, he would uh, do stuff. He would do stuff like, I don't know, call somebody out. Yeah, Chris Angel. That was his name. How many of y'all seen, remember him? He was on TV about 10 years. He, he was supposedly, but he was like communicating with the dead, Right. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Listen, if somebody comes in your room and says, I'm grandma and everything's all right, you say, you go back to hell where you came from. You ain't grandma. Well, the big thing that you talked about, supposedly, disappeared a February 7th. Really? Why'd he have to put a curtain in front of it? She's going to make it <laughs> so like it disappeared. It's like, uh, you know, hold this thing up here while, while this woman disappears uh, underneath the chairs. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it may really, you know, you know, they say, speak of the devil and he'll show up. That might be the way it is. I, I knew a guy, they, he could, he could like clap his hands, you know, and, or and lights go out, uh, and stuff like that. Just weird stuff. The guy had demonic power. Well, there are lights like that, but it wasn't that kind. Um, I mean, there's, I've seen lights go out over my head lots of times. We won't get into that. It starts getting spooky, but, any anything like that? That's not God. That ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't a hundred miles and stuff like that. That's you're fooling with the familiar spirits. That's what what we'll talk about in a minute. Anybody else? That's divination.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, your death will be in about three hours. Uh, it's good luck, fortune telling, uh, Charlie Charlie, tarot cards. All these kids know about Charlie Charlie, uh, where you take pencils and stuff at school. How I many of y'all know about that? Some, all the kids at school do it. You lay, look, you lay the pencils down, and then they answer questions and move and stuff like that. Kids at school fool stuff like that all the time. It's the devil's way of getting kids into the occult. Um, um, all right, let's go to the next one there. The next one there says, Observer of Times. Sounds like a newspaper, don't it? Uh, observer of Times. That means, that means uh, your horoscope. I, I, I think when you open up a newspaper, when you see the, the um, horoscope or that, well, there's another word they use for that, the uh, astrology, all that, just ignore it. Turn the page and ignore it. Christian has, I, I know people that say, they say, I'm going to look and see what the stars have plans for me today. Uh, you better get down on your knees and, and pray and see what the Lord has for you today. Get your instruction out of here. Now, all of that stuff has roots in Bible. The, the Bible does talk about stars. And the old timers plant their crops by the stars. Them farmer's almanac. There's something to that stuff. But not. I don't think you should make decisions based on the stars or try to seek some kind of higher knowledge from, from planets or the alignment. You know, you hear all kinds of stuff. Babies conceived on the full moon or this and that. And, and, and you know, the, us, the way the stars lined up means good luck. And don't, don't go out. You know, tonight, you know, a <laughs> uh, uh, bad moon on the rise or something like that. Uh, don't, it's observer of times, clouds, stars, seeing the fortune, horoscope, palm readers, uh, luck. The word luck, uh, we say it, I say it. Uh, somebody shoot, shoot a ball and I say, I have luck. And what we mean is it wasn't skill. That's what you mean. But actually, that word luck is mighty near kin to that word Lucifer. L-U-C luck, Lucifer and what it means is chance and that's why the old preachers preached against gambling and the reason the old preachers preached against gambling is because you're, you're depending on chance to win money. Um, I heard it put like this anybody who gambles a lot, goes to Las Vegas is not good at math. Because the odds are against you. The odds are against you. You know what? You go out there and you might, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Who are you talking to? Come, who, who are you, what do you mean? Come on, who? What? You're, talk, you're talking to a demon? Seven, come eleven, you know, roll them dice. You know, like you, now, games of skill are fine. The Bible talks about running races, com competition. You know, that's like football, baseball. Basketball, baseball, all, so anything you do with skill is, is, is a game. Anything of chance, like cards or gambling, slot machine. Well, I've, I've known people right here in this church. I don't know anybody in here right now. If you are, maybe this is for you. That got addicted to them gambling machines down at the store. And I've had, I've had wives call me and say, Brother Danny, every time he gets his check cashed, he's down there blows every bit of his money on them slot machines. Uh, I, I, ain't, I ain't the smartest person in the world, but I ain't never put a penny in one of them things. Not interested in it. You say, well, what if you us to win? Well, you might, but uh, you, you keep doing it, you won't. You go to, you'll go gamble one time and win something, and that'll get you hooked. And then you'll go give them more, and then you'll lose. Well, in them, them machines, they say, well, the odds are that if you keep playing this machine, eventually you keep putting enough money in it you're going to get the lucky numbers. Well, that machine don't know if you're somebody else. It starts all over again with the odds. Every time you start, you don't say, well, this is 15 times now. Come on. No, it's your first time to the machine. He thinks another person might have come up there and started. And you're better off just not to gamble. You're better off. And that's why the old preachers preached against them old card games. Listen, my daddy had the old barn over there when I was about, before I got saved, daddy had the old barn. He had a turkey shoot. 
down there below the house. And I mean, it sounded like war down there on Friday night. Boom, boom. We'd come down my driveway, and I'd have to stop and blow the horn to bomb the driveway for them to cease fire so we could get out. That's true. That's true because they'd shoot down there in that field down below my driveway. And uh, they'd sit there and gamble. And they'd sit there in the old barn and, and drink, drink beer and gamble. And uh, every Friday night, every Friday night, Daddy'd come home. He'd have a big water money about that big uh, from a turkey shoot. And he'd, he'd always, you know, you'd have like uh, 50 ones and a and $100 bill and wrap that $100 bill around them. Well, it looks like a roll of $100 bills. But, uh, you know, he'd have, he'd have that money and everything. And mom fussed, she fussed, she fussed. One night she went over there. Uh, my mom took a gun. She'd never shot a gun in her life. And, and went over there and run them all off. Said, I'm calling the cops if y'all don't leave. Man, them guys started getting out of there. Uh, because they're all drunk. She's afraid somebody's going to get shot. Uh, how many of y'all ever been to an old-fashioned turkey shoot? Okay, I, I, you, you shoot your gun, whoever gets closest to the middle of the target wins the turkey. But it ain't always a turkey. It can be whatever, a dog, uh, you know, deed to your house, <laughs> car, or something like that. <laughs> they, they get in deep sometimes. But anyway, uh, in them card games, buddy, they're sitting there like this. And all that smoke and that alcohol and them demons aren't them old them old occult figures on them cards and them guys are sitting there and they're saying, Come on, come on. That ain't the Lord. The Lord don't operate like that. You can you do whatever you want to. I ain't there ain't no scripture that says this, but my mom never wouldn't even allow play a deck of playing cards in her house. She'd take a fifth, daddy brought them in. Now we had them, we'd get them and play with them, but she didn't. We, we kept them hid from her. And I never did have them in our house uh, because of my mom. But uh, they, they, they supposedly, every one of them card, king, queen, all of them have some kind of occult connection to them somehow. I don't know that. But yeah, I know one thing, uh, that you get Holy Ghost-filled people don't hang around a pool hall playing card and shooting pool and drinking liquor. Holy Ghost filled people don't do that. God, that's a wrong atmosphere. I'm not saying it's wrong to play pool. If you got a pool table, that's fine without the other stuff. All right, anybody else right quick? That's that's an observer of times. Um I, if you if you're if your fortune cookie says, do not do the big thing you're supposed to do tomorrow. Cancel that. That that gets in your head and messes with you. You might have been going to buy a house or you might have been going. I don't want that thing messing with my head. I don't believe that's God telling me that. 10,000 other people got that same one in all these restaurants around here. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not so sure about that Bible code. It may be, it to me, it's that's a little far out. It really is. They've they've gone back and they've found Hebrew words and these Bible codes that spells out New York City Twin Towers or something, you know, and and nine eleven, and it, whereas all this stuff was in the Bible. Now it might be supernatural book. I'm not that knowledgeable of that I, I I I looked at it and I, I read part of a book and I thought I don't know about this. Now there are definitely numerology teachings in the Bible. Number seven, obviously, the number three, number one, the number of God, number two is division, number three is the Trinity, number four is the world. You know, you can I mean some of them's obvious. But some of that stuff after you get so high. Well Ralph Sexton Sr. boy he he could tell you a number for everything. Number thirty four represents Israel's trials at one town or something like that. Uh, I'm not so sure about some of that stuff. Yeah. Symmetria. Mm -hmm. It might be. It might be. I ain't saying it ain't. I'm just saying I doubt it.
Yep. You know what she said about there's Bible numerology, about all this stuff we're talking about is the devil's counterfeit for what the real thing is. Knowing the future, uh, re, you know, getting the stars, all that stuff has a Bible base and the devil's took it and perverted it. That's what uh, Ruckman, you said that everything evil is something good twisted. Everything evil in this world is something God made good to start with and the devil twisted. All right, anybody else? We'll get this next one. Uh-oh. Alders open. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that probably is true. It's like Las Vegas, people. Listen, they don't build them gigantic casinos and, and let you stay in a motel room for $30 off people winning money. That's built off losers. Yeah, something for nothing. You're getting something for nothing. Yeah, one more. Yeah, and you don't. There are people that people say, boy, he's the luckiest thing. I don't know. That guy might have some kind of demonic power on him. Luck. Lucifer, like light. L U Lumen, Luce, Lucid, that's light. Angel of light. Anybody else? Really? I wouldn't trust them. I wouldn't trust them things. You know they're rigged. That's like the guy Russian roulette. You know, I used to do a song, preach on a song as a kid that said, uh, I put a bullet in the chamber, put the barrel in my mouth, six to one, I'm going to make it. One in six, I'll snuff it out. That's a song. That's a kid, song kids sing. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> on that note, we'll move on. <laughs> How about an enchanter? Enchanter, get it on these, and we'll go. We'll have to finish it later. Enchanter, what is an enchanter? What the Bible said, don't be it. You better find out what it is. Bible said, don't have it in your house. You better find out what it is. An enchanter is somebody who is. It's basically meditation. It's basically hypnotizing people, mantras, using magic to put a spell on people. Uh, you know, I'm gonna cast a spell on you. Uh, that kind of stuff. All of that is of the devil. Charming. Uh, to put a spell on. Uh, that's why you hear preachers talk about yoga. There's no such thing as Christian yoga. Uh, yoga is, I don't know a lot about yoga, but you know, you, where you sit in certain positions and do your hands like this and stuff. And they say that's so the energy don't just run out your hand. When you do like that, it runs and it comes back. And goes in here and runs back and stays in you and and you meditate and stuff like that. You need to exercise. Everybody in here needs to exercise. I y'all think I exercise a lot, but I don't. I run all the time, but I don't. There's a lot of my muscles and stuff. I I don't enjoy exercising. I hate lifting weights. Carrying they got a gym over there at their track. And the day it snowed and we went over there and oh gosh. I got one of them big balls you roll around on your belly, on you know, and a treadmill and this thing. You do this and that. I ain't that kind of stuff. I don't know what anybody gets out of that. You're running, not going nowhere. Uh, you, uh, and, and, but anyway, you should. You should. I try to lift weights. You should, but not meditate. Not Unless you're meditating on God and his word. If you're meditating on God and his word and listening to good Christian music, fine. But that other stuff, I don't, I don't see a need for a Christian fooling with yoga. I mean, and they do it in churches now. Uh, maybe I'll preach on it sometime and tell you the, the, the demonic roots of it. But, and I ain't trying to make you feel bad if you've done it. Maybe you've done it out of ignorance or something. But 
That's what that is, meditation. Uh, hypnotizing people. You ever seen in old time movies, they'd swing a thing and say, you're getting very sleepy. And swing this thing back and forth. Uh, you you get rhythm, like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> the first thing you know, something comes in you. That's enchanter. Put a spell on. Remember the old movies where they put a spell on people? Uh, the teenagers today, movies today out of Hollywood, I wish I could remember that one. I used to preach about it. It was come out about 20 years ago where these girls, is all these girls at school and cheerleaders, and they're all in love with these boys and all that. And these girls really wanted this boy to like them. So they all got together and sat in a circle and, and put their hands together and called on the familiar spirit to make that boy like her. How I many of y'all have heard of them doing stuff like that, right? Well, the next day at school, he says, I love you. And it zapped him out, man. Well, what's that teaching? That's teaching to millions of teenagers across the country, you can get in touch with some kind of power that'll make that boy like you or that girl like you. Anybody ever done that? No, you don't have to raise your hand. How many of you ever prayed the Lord? Lord, let her like me. We've, yeah, we've all done that probably. Uh, or Lord, make her not like me. <laughs> pray that prayer. Yeah, yeah. Right there's your third eye. That's that one eye I preach about all the time. Have y'all heard the latest Disney character just came out is a Cyclops thing, a gay character, openly out gay, and he's got one big eye right there in the middle of his head. How weird is that? Look it up. The one-eyed gay Disney character. It's coming out. It might be already out. That, that means Disney, all that stuff, that's the powers of the air. Principalities and powers of the air. There ain't nothing wrong with riding a roller coaster. But uh, when you get all that money and all that fame and all that stuff, you better watch that, all them, them Disney movies and stuff that's coming out now. They ain't like Bugs Bunny. That's it's getting boys with boys, girls with girls, and it's pushing the devil, pushing the devil's agenda. Uh, all right, anybody else? We're gonna we're gonna stop right there. But um, I think a lot of times people see stuff like that as harmless, and it's really not. And the best thing you can do, you get by this old book right here. You get down every morning and say, Lord. You help me to live like this book says. If you want to tell me something, tell me out of this book. Lead me today by the Holy Spirit. I ain't depending on no palm reader uh, to, to read my book. Has anybody ever been to a palm reader and will admit it? You don't? You have? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you're going to get a good job or something. They look at them lines on your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me $20. Happiness is coming your way. And they say, right there, I swear, them two lines. They know that's where I had a bicycle rack. You crazy? Nope, there goes another line. Um, well, I, I talked to them. I talked to them before that. When we went to Underground Atlanta, we took all the kids from uh, in the choir at New Manor to went to Underground Atlanta. <laughs> Man, we were just spread out everywhere. Everybody's giving out tracks, and there's witches and 
palm readers down in there. These weird ones, these turbans on their head. Looked like it was from a hippie generation. And we tried to witness to them. Boy, she did not like it at all. She hated us being in there. She hated us being in there. Yeah. I mean, God, it, I mean, it, and now, I've been out of it since 2006. I can't imagine what they're trying to do now. Oh, I've heard. Things. I've heard. And, uh, they argued on the AIDS. I said, look, everybody's pretty much everybody's going to die of AIDS. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. I, and, well, 3% seems to have an immunity to it, but the other 97%. But they would argue, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. And you know why? Yeah. All right, let's stand. It sure is. There's a lot of stuff in there. All right. We've had our lesson for tonight. Amen. Uh, let's let's uh, pray. Don't forget now, Friday evening, we're going to sing. If you want to go, be here at 545. And then... Uh, you don't have to sing. We're just going to go enjoy the Jubilee down there in Troutman. And we'll go to McDonald's or something after church and have a little time of fellowship. Saturday morning, we'll meet and go visiting. And we're looking forward to that. And so uh, let's just be dismissed with a prayer. Uh, Ruby, go ahead and dismiss us.